to a large extent the schools do play an important role. Uh, the teachers are extremely important in, in motivating the students, in uh, getting them interested into science. Uh, but certainly you have to look into yourself also and see how much effort you are willing to put in. I did most of my schooling in India, even my uh, veterinary degree I took in India. So it was a big discussion when, when uh, I started schooling at home. Uh, I was to be sent to a Hindi school, which is the native language over there, uh, but then my father wanted me to go to an English school. So it was a big debate because the English school was very expensive. It, it was not possible to pay for that, but ultimately I landed up there. And I do owe a lot to my school. Uh, my bringing up, my education, my background, everything is because of that school. It, it, it's a totally different culture in India. Uh, the, the parents do influence quite a lot in children making choices for their future education. Uh, they, they sort of impose their uh, desires that the son should be a, a doctor or a, uh, an engineer or something. So they do constantly kind of pester you. <laughs> that happens. <laughs> Your life could be a pretty disposition. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but my parents were far away when, when uh, I got into the vet school. Uh, they were thousands of miles away. So I took the decision, I got the admission, and I went there. Your own choices. Uh, my dad did go to college, but only two years. My mom, she never went to high school either. Uh, when, uh, when I was in grade eight, we had to make choice that uh, what, to, what to choose. Either you have to choose arts or science or humanities or something like that. And it was almost pre-decided at home that I have to go in science. <laughs> Did you Straightforward. <laughs> did you thus like it or did you perhaps resent that? No, I, I, I liked uh, maths quite a lot. Uh, biology in grade 8 was pretty good. I was lucky to have a very good teacher in grade 8 who, who taught biology very nicely and that perhaps influenced quite a lot. Uh, there are several phases of life and a person changes several times. It, I, I strongly believe in it. Uh, there can be times when you suddenly feel that you're not very good, but if that time passes and you mature enough, you can do the same job hundred times better. Uh, when I was in veterinary degree, there was a time when I was completely, I thought I can go nowhere. I should stop studying and I'm, I'm just useless. And then suddenly, there came a time which was just a turnaround. And that it was a matter of 10, 12 days when one of my grades turned out to be very bad. Mm -hmm. um, it was the best, I call it as the turnaround time for me. I used to be a very good student and suddenly that D grade turned me around. <laughs> so it motivated you to work It harder. motivated to work me harder, it woke me up, it told me that you can do it and from that day onwards it was just moving forward okay. all the time. Uh, my research interests are focused on genomics, animal genomics, animal, animal genetics, genomics, what genetics, is that? Oh, genetics, yeah. genetics. Yeah, uh, study of the genome or, or study of, of the DNA is referred to as uh, uh, the genetics part. So I'm, I'm very much interested in it, and uh, particularly my focus is on comparing uh, the livestock and animal genomes with human and mouse genomes. Would you say that's a field that's just beginning to explode? Oh, it, it started uh, exploding five, six, seven years ago, actually. Um, and uh, we, we are expanding now more and more, trying to find those intricacies hidden within the genomes. Over here, I am teaching uh, genetics at this school. Uh, back in Sweden and in Denmark, I used to give lectures to, to uh, veterinarians and agriculture scientists from uh, developing countries. That was my main outreach activity. Uh, the magic word is uh, dedication and hard work. Nothing will stop you from succeeding.